Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel. And in this video, we're making rye bread. And I'm excited because I've never actually made rye bread before, but I saw the recipe on the packet, the back of this uh, dark rye flour package from Bob's Red Mill. I will look over and see if I can find a link to this recipe and put it in the description. If not, I'll write down what I did here. But the first thing you have to have ingredients wise is two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast or one of those little seven gram packets, one and a quarter cups of warm rot water, like 110 degrees, uh, one and a half teaspoons of molasses, and that makes it awesome. Uh, a tablespoon of oil, which I've got, one and three quarter cups of artesian bread flour, and I'm going to consider that my home ground flour. That's pretty artesian. And one cup of the Bob's Red Mill organic dry uh, or dark rye flour, two tablespoons of vital wheat gluten, and you know I use that in my regular whole ground bread, a tablespoon of caraway seeds, and finally one and a half teaspoons of salt. So the first thing we do is uh, by hand sprinkle the yeast over the water. Well, I've got the warm water and I'm going to put it in my mixer, and then I'm going to, in a large mixing bowl, okay, Put the molasses in and then we're going to mix that up by hand and then let me get a little there we are a little spatula so i'm going to put the molasses in and then mix it up and then we're going to sprinkle the yeast over the top i'll see if i can bring you over so you can see what's going on in here so let me see if i can slide you over don't want to hit any of my ingredients there there you go. So I've got the molasses and the warm water in there. And now what I'm going to do is sprinkle the yeast over the top of that. And we're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes so that yeast can proof and it's going to bubble all up. So it says, sprinkle the yeast over the water and molasses in a large mixing bowl and let it sit for five minutes. Then we're going to add the remaining ingredients and mix until the dough pulls away from the bowl. That will take uh, about... You know a little bit but I'm gonna put it in here and we'll come back to you as soon as this yeast proofs in this um, mixer okay while this yeast is proofing you can see that it's proofing see it's starting to foam up but while it's doing that I'll read the directions so you know what we're doing so first of all I have all the ingredients sprinkle the yeast over the water and molasses in a large mixing bowl and let it sit for five minutes that's what we're doing then we're going to add the remaining ingredients and mix until the dough, pull, dough pulls away from the sides of the bowl. Turn the dough onto a lightly floured surface and knead for about 10 minutes. But uh, if you're using an electric mixer, you need for four minutes on medium speed with the dough hook attachment. So I'm going to mix it and then once it all comes away from the bowl, I'll let it continue mixing for another four minutes. Then we put the dough in a clean oiled bowl and cover and let it rise until doubled it'll take about an hour then we kind of punch it down let it rise for another 15 minutes and then it's going to go into a preheated oven at 350 degrees in a lightly floured 8 by 4 inch loaf pan and i like to use my cast iron pan so i will have that one ready to go so there you go there's also instructions here if you want to use a um a bread machine there's instructions on the back for that too but we're going to bake it for 30 minutes and then we're gonna have awesome rye bread. And I'm making this because I have plans to use this for something specific for dinner. And so I'm excited about this bread. So I'm gonna be back to you as soon as that's set for a little bit longer and it's proofed a little bit more. All right, it looks uh, looks a pretty foamy and pretty proofed. So now I'm gonna turn my little mixer on and simply follow the directions with say, Add the remaining ingredients and mix until the dough, pu dough pulls away from the sides of the bowl. So we're going to turn this guy on. I'm going to put, uh, oh, I don't know if I told you guys about the one tablespoon of caraway seeds. I don't remember. All right, I'm going to put in the rye flour first. And we're going to let that mix. And then I will do the regular artesian flour, which is just my home ground flour. Try to mix it this way so that you can see. Sorry. I got it at a different angle this time. Okay. That. And now, 
the wheat, vital wheat gluten, and the oil, fatal twin oil, and the salt. Oh man, it's still a little salt. Oh well, that's good luck. Salt and my caraway seeds. Now, I'm going to let that mix until it starts pulling away from the sides of the bowl, and I will bring you back. All right, this is clearly pulling away from the sides of the bowl, so because I'm using a mixer, it says I need to let this go for four minutes. It feels a little dry to me, but I'm not going to adjust anything because I'm going to follow the directions exactly and to make sure that, you know, I've not done anything that could change this until I see how it turns out. So I'm going to let this go for four minutes, and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, so I let the dough go uh, in, the, in the mixer for four minutes, and now it turned out actually really nice. So I washed out the mixer bowl, and I've greased it, and I'm going to set the dough in there. I always spray a little oil on the top, and then I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to let it rise. So now it says to me on the instructions to... Put in a clean oiled bowl, which I did, cover and let it rise until doubled, which will take about an hour. And then we'll be ready to preheat the oven and put it into the oven. So I'm going to let this go for about an hour and I'll bring you back when it has... Alright, now I've let it rise and I'm going to punch it down a little bit and let it go for about 15 more minutes. Then I will put it in the little pan that I have for it. So there we go, 15 minutes, I kind of punched it down. And now I'll let it rise for about 15 more minutes. All right, so that has set for 15 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it and put it in the pan. So I'm just going to give it a nice shaping, kind of roll it down. And what, the way I always do it is I kind of fold it in on itself and I pinch the bottom seam. And then I kind of twist the ends under. I do this on all my bread. Just kind of poke it in and twist it under, and then put it in the pan. Make sure all it's nice and filled in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that over with a cover over it, and I'm going to let that rise until, it might take about an hour or until it's above the edges of the pan, and then we're going to put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 350. So sometime between now and that time, uh, you'll want to preheat your oven to 350, and then we'll be back. Oh, I wanted to point out, some people will put a little oil on the top. I like to take, um, I have these cloths that I made just out of fat quarters, and I just edge the edge. And I usually will put warm water on those and cover them so that the top crust doesn't get dried out. So that I do with all of my bread as well. All right, I've let this rise, and now there it is. I'm going to put it in the oven at 354, 30 minutes. Let me double check. Is it 30 minutes on the back of the old Bob's Red Mill? Um, yes, bake for 30 minutes until golden browned and hollow sounding when tapped. And the internal temperature should be 180 to 200 degrees and then we'll cool it on a wire rack. So in the oven goes for 30 minutes. All right, it is out of the oven and I think it looks wonderful. There it is. And I did check the temperature and the internal temperature is actually 190 degrees. So I think it's perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it cool, and then I will come back when it's ready to slice it. Because for dinner tonight, we're going to have this bread, and I'm going to be doing a little something with some ugly chicken that you will see a video on later. But for now, let's focus on this amazing rye bread fresh out of the oven. Well, it has cooled, and I have sliced it. And this bread looks and smells wonderful. Look at the look at the texture of it. It just is great. So, anyway, I hope you try breads that you haven't usually made before. And like I said, this is from the Bob's Red Mill Dark Rye Flour um, package. It's right there on the back. I will look and see if there's a link to Bob's Red Mill for this recipe. If not, I'll write down what I did. And it's lunchtime, so I think it's time to make sandwiches. So, there you go. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.